Can you I ask, you were a leader in an Oklahoma chapter oh, of a white my, nationalist uh, organization, uh, and I want to know uh, if you have any explanation to that. Come here, come here, come here. Come here. <laughs> then why did you march and unite the right? Why did you hold a tiki torch and march as people said Jews will not replace your us? Sir? The year 2024 continues to be the year of accountability as a white nationalist councilman in Oklahoma who marched in Charlottesville was just thrown off the city council by the voters in a recall election. Let's discuss. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, state attorney for Palm Beach County aka the florida lawman here on the midas touch network i want to thank you for all your likes and your comments i love reading them so please keep them coming and i've got good news for you because in the latest election result for common sense and decency the folks of a small town in oklahoma got rid of their white nationalist city councilman in a special recall election Meet Judd Blevins, a city council member in Enid, Oklahoma. Well, make that former city councilman. He marched alongside white nationalists in the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville and has over ties to white nationalist organizations. And despite all that, he won a seat representing Ward 1 in on Enid's six-member city council last year. Now, the people of the community said they didn't know about his ties to these groups. He's a former Marine, and it's a Republican area. They just you know, thought he was a run-of-the-mill candidate. But Mr. Blevins is not shy about what kind of politics he has and what political figures he identifies with. According to an NBC News article, Blevins said, If speaking out against what was being done to this country, what is continuing to be done to this country is a crime, then I would gladly plead guilty to that, he said. Answering a follow-up question, Blevins, a former Marine, said the purpose of his prior activism was, quote, the same issues that got Donald Trump elected in 2016, securing America's borders, reforming our legal immigration system, and frankly pushing back on this anti-white hatred that is so entertainment. While Blevins admitted to marching at Charlottesville, where he held a tiki torch alongside men who shouted, Jews will not replace us, he said his purpose was limited to preserving statues of American soldiers. It's our history, he said. It's our heritage. It's who we are. Pressed about whether he regretted marching at a rally where counter-protesters were beaten and a woman was killed, Blevin said, one day in Virginia five years ago or seven is not really relevant to the next three years in Enid. But it was for the voters of Enid who ousted him back on this anti-white hatred that is so common in media and entertainment. Because I felt it was important to protest the removal of statues of American soldiers, of American figures, that if they remove statues of men who, who fought in the Civil War, they'll move on to whoever they want. With the recent national attention on my opponent's past involvement with a white nationalist group, I felt it was time to step forward. And I think it's an example for all of us what happened in small Enid, Oklahoma, because after Blevins was elected and after his views came out into the public, Enid's progressive residents, yes, there are progressive residents in Enid, Oklahoma, organized and formed the Enid Social Justice Committee, ESJC. And its first mission was to make Blevins apologize for his past with that or to get rid of him. So after he refused to apologize, they gathered enough signatures for a recall petition, and it was game on. But in Oklahoma, you need to get someone to run against someone before you can recall them. So it's not just a recall and then you find someone later. To recall someone, you need to find a candidate. Enter Cheryl Patterson, who couldn't be any different than Blevins. She's a soft-spoken, short in stature woman who served on various state and local boards, but she had the courage of her convictions. She wanted to restore the integrity of the community and send the message that hate was never acceptable in her town. And so she decided to step up and run, and she refused to go negative in the whole campaign. She stayed positive, but she had a great coalition of support. But in this race, you could say it was a referendum on the white nationalists, because according to the NBC News article, from 2017 to 2019, Blevins led an Oklahoma chapter of the white nationalist organization Identify Europa 
The group dissolved in 2019 and rebranded as the American Identity Movement, which disbanded in 2020. Its leaders have splintered to other white nationalist groups. In Enid, as in most municipal elections, voter turnout is low. Blevins won last year by 36 votes in an election in which 808 people, less than 15% of registered voters, came out to vote. So this could be a lesson for all of us. I mean, the and Enid was able to help galvanize people to reject hate in their community because they knew that most people in their community would not want to be identified with white nationalism, just like in our country. The same is true. And even though you see those who espouse white nationalist views try to do what Blevins did, try to say, well, it's really about you know, other issues like crime and immigration, you know, if, you, if you bear down and hold them to it and get to their core, you, you'll see some some things that the country will reject, that the public in Enid rejected, which is their true self as someone who espoused radical extremist views, views that are unacceptable to most Americans. And that's what happened in Enid. They shined a flashlight on this guy Blevins. And in a conservative area, they roundly rejected him once they knew what his views were about. Patterson not only won, she won by nearly 20 points. And I know for some people, it may be, not be enough, and I understand that. But when you're going against an incumbent who's draping himself in MAGA language, it's not easy to defeat someone like that in a conservative area. Well, he was defeated and soundly. Judd Blevins lost his seat on Enid's six-member city council by 268 votes. Nearly 1,400 people turned out, about a quarter of Ward 1's registered voters, and hundreds more than voted when Blevins was first elected last year. According to the winner, Patterson, she said that Enid is not a town that promotes white nationalism or white supremacy in any way, and the people are good, and I'm hoping that the results of the election will show that. Blevins compared himself to former President Donald Trump. Besieged on all sides by a faction of far-left perverts, does that sound familiar? And a deep state within the city council that went all the way up to the mayor, whom he accused of working with the ESJC in orchestrating Patterson's candidacy. He doubled down on claims that someone from the ESJC had tried to assassinate him by cutting one of the truck's brake lines. Enid police found no evidence to support his allegations. Yeah, I know this this, uh, sounds familiar to us all. Grievance, martyrdom, lies about what's happening to him, and putting to the other guys as a threat to our national security, and to the future of our country. It was rejected here in Enid. It can be rejected nationwide. And on election night on Tuesday, the progressive group celebrated, quote, we did it. The lesson, she said, was that a small group anywhere could fight extremism. You can do this because we did this. We didn't even know what we were doing, and we did this. This is possible. So Midas Mighty, the lesson here is clear. Judges, prosecutors, members of Congress, they're not going to be the ones to save our democracy. We cannot rely on them to do for us what we have to do for ourselves. And that is vote. That is organize. That is get the message out. Because I know it can be frustrating. I know it's frustrating when the wheels of justice move so slowly. I know it's frustrating when you have a Supreme Court that seems to put its finger on the scale. But in the end, it's going to be the people who will make the decision. Don't get demoralized. Follow the lead of Enid, Oklahoma. In the end, democracy and inclusiveness will prevail. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, a.k.a. the Florida Lawman. If you like this video, please like it. And if you want more, check out our new true crime channel, True Crime MTN, the fastest growing true crime network. I'll see you over there. And also, I'll see you here next time. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.